Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Tool to Play presents Still Got Game with Derek D. Smooth Nolan and Joel Duda Rock Albert. This episode of Still Got Game is brought to you by GoDaddy. Hey now, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Still Got Game, episode 37. Still Got Game is the official podcast of Tool2Play.com. I am, as always, Derek D. Smooth Nolan. And I am Joel, the dude I rock Albert. What's going on, Joel, dude I rock Albert? You're looking pretty fancy tonight on the stream. I got a little bit of the green screen going on. I'm taking my uh, hits, literally, from Hitman. Nice. That's where he's, he's taught me now how to green screen. You are pro at green screen. I'm proing it up. I'm proing it up right now. I'm I'm repping. I'm repping the destiny behind no. me. Not not that we're fans of any particular games at all. No, we yeah, don't. We don't tend to promote any one game or say one game is greater than another game. Yes, they're just happens they pay to be, us. I'm just I just happen to be in space, and while I'm in space, a logo happens to be floating behind me. I can't really stop that. Nice. Yeah. Before you know it, the whole show will be green screen, and Jay and I will green screen ourselves into a couch together, and yeah, we'll be like exactly. Uh, I'll be like, hey, Jay, what do you think of that? Right. <laughs> high five, high five. And we'll do like Can't a high five. But we'll have to green screen that and it'll look horrible. It will. It'll be like a face high five. But anyway, uh, so you're looking good on your, your green screen tonight. And, and hopefully uh, I'll be redoing the, the studio here to have a green screen as well. And then we will uh, we'll all be weirdos. Exactly. All right. Well, why don't we hit into the show proper? and We'll jump right into feedback from last week's show. Remember, if you want to leave us a voicemail. It will cut you off after a minute. Donna comments. I thought I could never hear too much of you guys. And after last week's episode, I was right. I was able to get through a big portion of my day on Friday doing nothing but listening to Still Got Game. Thanks for supersizing it. So. I'm, I'm, I'm actually surprised someone even commented like this because I myself could not even <laughs> listen. Normally, I could listen to myself for days. Uh, I was getting sick of hearing my own voice after like hour two. I think I was just like, Jesus, this is just way too much. Well, normally I edit uh, the audio version for the podcast of the vidcast in uh, the following day. And usually that takes twice as long as the length of the show. Oh, yeah. So sure. You can imagine there's a reason why the, the podcast and, and the video hit on Friday, because it took a long time to edit because there's only so much you can listen to yourself. And it really was a conservative amount of time doing the editing. So oh, yeah. big, big pat on the back for myself. Good job. Good job. Nice work, you. Thanks. <laughs> nice work, me. All right. Uh, well, thank you, Donna. That's very kind of you to say. And when I started to read your, uh, your comments, I was actually a little nervous. Uh, all right. Acid Snow comments. That was a fun podcast. It was good to hear Tiff on the show. As a bonus side effect, my roommate walked by and heard me listening to the podcast and then walked in my room and asked me, is that a gamer chick on the radio? You guys probably have a new listener. Well played, guys. Or should I say, girl. Um, yeah, sometimes, uh, sometimes having the female persuasion around helps. It really helps in all aspects of life, really. If you're- it, I was going to say, this is like not a gaming thing, although it helps even more, I'd say, in the gaming world. Uh, but normally, if you have a female persuasion around at some point, probably a good thing. Yeah, so. especially if you're going dancing. Yes, yeah. You're, dude you're, on dude dancing, not really uh, amazing. You're, you're going to a wedding and you need a date. Good, good time for the opposite good sex. Good time there. Um, yep. I, I could go on all day. You could. <laughs> really, it's common you sense. You shouldn't, <laughs> but you could. <laughs> it, it should be common sense, but yes. Right. Uh, it, did, it does uh, increase the, the estrogen factor of the show and, and kind of eat into the testosterone levels, which works mm -hmm. well. Uh, and sometimes that third person dynamic helps out, but, uh, yeah, the E3 team is definitely, uh, uh, a, a triumvirate. It's the triforce of E3 coverage. And we definitely needed all three of us to, to stack that two and a half hour show. So yeah, for sure. Thank you. Acid snow. All right. I'll be sure comments. I picked up your live stream on Twitch and I'm glad I did. I came in about 30 minutes in and love the E3 stuff. I think you covered the show in the perfect amount of detail. There was literally no more detail to give. No, no, you so could not good. go more detail than we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If there was any more detail, one more layer would have been like another two to three hours. So that's literally physically all we could get through. So I'm, I'm glad that people appreciate that. I'm pretty sure we almost gave it in actual real time detail. <laughs> it was almost, yes, it was, it was almost <laughs> real time. 
<laughs> but that'll be our goal, I guess. Maybe like after E three number fifteen or something, we'll just like we'll, we'll go do, we'll go we'll minute for day podcast. Yeah. All right, Everyone's so it's Sunday. Party. Right now it's 10.02 <laughs> p.m. and we're at a party and we're going to be here for a while. Now I'm going to walk over to the bar and then, yes. So we will yeah, you, We've actually got a drink too. So like by the end of it, we'll be like hungover drunk and all the things will happen. You know what? For that one, we'll just go pro, the three of us, for the entire yeah. weekend. Yeah. And then at night, people can tune in during the sleep part of the stream where it's just right. the camera either facing face down into the bed <laughs> or face up to the ceiling or, yes. Uh that, that, that's probably the first time that coverage will be done. And you, we'll okay. offer you multi-camera selection. It's going to be sure. fun. The We're going to be pioneers, like the Jenny cam of non-porn. Right. That's like the first Jenny cam reference that's been dropped in probably five years. With good reason. Yes. But yeah. back in the day, Jenny cam was the shit. It was the only way. It was, it was the first. It was the first. Yes. All right. And last but not least, they got comments. Always my favorite episode every year. You three did not disappoint. Um, well, thank you, Vega. E3 is our favorite time of the year, and that's obviously one of the more fun episodes we do. It's long, and it's arduous, and we all feel like dying sometime in the middle, but it is, uh, it's one of my favorites, too. Sometimes people just go to sleep midway through. Sometimes that happens. Yeah. Sometimes Jay just walks off. I take a 10-second <laughs> break to reload a drink, and Jay... When he's like, oh, you took a break. I'll be right back. And he's gone. I go for away for 30, 40 minutes. minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was sure. That was pretty fucked up. But, yeah. um, but yes, we appreciate all the comments. And uh, thank you for, for all the positive feedback. Uh, well, if any of you have feedback, give us a call, 773-527-2961. Or email us at podcast at tool to play dot com. And in site-related news, we have... Uh, we have some some chatter and some buzz on the Tool to Play homepage going on with about the the future of Tool to Play. You want to talk a little bit to that, Jay? Yeah, I think it's a great. First of all, it's really awesome to see this many people come out. It's one of those things where we talk when we talk about Tool to Play and and how things have changed and the in the direction we're going. Sometimes you often expect not a lot of people are going to give you feedback. That's one of the hardest things to get in a community is actually have people come and tell you what they like or hate. Lucky for us, Tool to Play has a vocal vocal voice, so they don't mind telling you exactly what sucks and what's great is a lot of the ideas of the things that we thought were wrong is pretty much exact is probably almost like a megaphone is personified when we talk to the people in the community so um i believe we're really on the right track when we make all these changes it's going to be interesting to see what happens when we kind of talk about what we're doing uh but simplification seems to be all around what we talk about and making sure people can get to our content faster um so if you guys want to like, you know, spearhead that or get be even more involved, that's what we really want. I think a big part of what we were talking about is getting mo even more people involved and actually having them uh, be, have a bigger role in Tool to Play. So if you want to do that, we've said it before. We'll say it again. Drop me a line at admin at tool to play .com. That way me and Derek both get it. And uh, tell me what you want to do. You know, tell me how, how you want, how you think you can better the community. Um we're, we're looking at ways to really even connect ourselves with more older gamers communities and stop being so closed. And that's really the theme. We don't want to be a closed system anymore. We want to be all about finding people that want to play video games that are older, uh, have jobs, have kids, have whatever, and bringing them together. That's the goal. That's it. It's all we really want to do. So that's the conversation that's on the table. I invite everyone to go to the homepage and check it out uh, and voice your opinion. What do you guys want to see? What you don't want to see? Stuff like Sometimes that. you have more kids that can fit in your clubhouse and you need a bigger clubhouse. Exactly. Yep. So and exactly. there's plenty of room in our clubhouse. All right. Well, that was a uh, nice and concise Jay. So like you said, tool to play homepage, it's called, I think it's, it's literally called the future of tool to play. Or, yes. That is the title. Yes. yes. So find it there and comment. And if you want to do something, let us know. There's no idea that's too stupid. Yeah. Well, definitely. There are, well, there we, is, but we, we just won't, we won't you. say anything. Yeah. yeah, you won't know. Well, you just won't get a response. But right. if your idea is awesome, then we'll hit you up and we'll follow up. Exactly. So I guess on that, Jay, why don't we slam on over into what we're playing? What have you been playing this week, Joel Dude I Rock Albert? Uh, well, I'm obviously on Wildstar. It came out about two weeks ago. I finally have had some time to play it. Um, I also played a little bit of the Battlefield uh, beta on the PS4, so I'm mixing it up. Nice. Uh, but this weekend, I actually hung out with our good friend uh, Avery. It was his birthday, so we went out on Saturday and stuff like that. So I haven't played too many games this weekend. But I'm, I'm, I'll be back into it this week. I'm pretty excited. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, yeah we had good times with Avery uh, two weeks yeah. ago at E3. So, so that's, a, that's a happy birthday shout out to Avery. If he's, if he's Very right. nice. Avery, close call on Twitter phone. Avery, cool. close call. All one yeah. word. Yep. Uh, well, I have been playing a shit ton of Titanfall. 
surprise, surprise. Um, it's all I played before E3, and now it's pretty much what I'm playing <laughs> until the next thing comes out. But I, I just hit Gen 9 last night, so I am home stretching it right now. Home stretching to Gen 10. Now, this is like a shitty ass generation where I have to do like a million different things, but it's fun and I'm almost done. And then I'll just milk it until, uh, until the next game. But definitely a good time playing a lot with, uh, with Tiff and my good buddy, Mr. GBMS. Now, have you tried out the, the beta for uh, Battlefield at all? I mean, obviously, we played it at E3. Have you, have you given it a, any, any shot? I or have any? not gone back to it. The only, the only beta or alpha that I played was I played the Shadow of the Destiny one on the PS4 when we had right. that. But, uh, yeah. but nothing since. It's all, been all Titanfall all the time. All right, all right. I mean, it's it was, a good game. It was fun. At, at, I, I loved. Uh, I love what I saw at Battlefield at at E3. It was yeah, yeah. It was Battlefield, but not the same tired situation, right? Scenario, but right. I, I am looking forward to see where where that goes and what other game modes are in there besides just the the heist mode. Yeah. Uh, once we find out more, but yeah, very cool. Good stuff. All right. Well, on that, why don't we hop on over into the new releases? And we have a light week of new releases this week. First new release out this week is a multi-platform release, and it's Transformers Rise of the Dark Spark. This is out for the Xbox One, the PS4, the Wii U, the 360, the PS3, the 3DS, and the PC. Whew, that is a mouthful. A I, can't, I can't wait till we're done with the last-gen platforms. Yeah, me too. Just one less thing to fucking say. I know. Well, it's two less, actually. Two less, yeah. Yes. We get rid of that PS3. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. And eventually, we can just say the Wii U is last-gen and get rid of that, too. <laughs> All right. Well, this is the uh, the new this is the new Transformers game, and basically it tries to please everyone. So, using an alternate timeline system, it's both a direct sequel to the Fall of Cybertron game, as well as at the same time being a movie tying game for the new Transformers Age of, uh, Age of Extinction movie. Uh, it's a third person shooter with a full single player campaign. And as part of that campaign, you can either uh, go Autobots or Decepticons. So it's really two separate campaigns. One, you're trying to destroy the Earth. One, you're trying to save the Earth. Um, uh, on all non-Nintendo platforms, coincidentally, uh, it also features a four-player co-op mode, which is basically a horde mode. You fight wave after wave after wave of guys. And uh, those uh, that is one of the more genius things that's happened to gaming in the past 10 years is just someone to finally be like, well, why don't we just make this endless thing where it just gets harder and harder and we just send yeah. wave after wave. And, uh, it took uh, gears of war to, to bring it to the forefront. And now everybody ships with a horde mode, basically, yeah. well, unless okay. you're on a Nintendo system, but, uh, graphically the game looks great. Um, you know, the, the past normally in the movie games, we, we usually shit on cause they suck, but the past few transformer games have done really, really well. And we've yeah, had, they have, We've had positive reviews on the Tool to Play homepage from our reviewing staff. We've had uh, a lot of commenters, a lot of members of the site playing these games. I, I think that they, I, and maybe it's because they're not true movie games, but they really, really do well and they do a good job. So it's it's definitely not for me, but um, I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing what what kind of review scores this gets. Yeah, it's weird. I've seen so many good reviews come out of this. I've never had, which is weird because I love Transformers. So I don't know if it's like. I've been over transformed because of all the movies and all that other shit. Uh, but I've never had the desire to actually play Transformers. So it's really strange because it's done very well. And uh, I know the, a lot of people are saying the multiplayer is actually pretty good, mm -hmm. which is weird for Transformers games. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it definitely looks like a great game, I guess maybe just because of, you know, there's all these great games coming out. I've sort of forgot to look forward to anything else. My mind is so focused on, the you know what's coming up in September and October and all those things that I have I don't even pay attention to the game space right now you know what I mean it's like, like what's coming out now is unimportant yeah. it's what's coming well, out later know. that's the shit right yes. like why would I care about your game if it's not coming out in September because clearly all the good games are coming out then yeah, you didn't um, put enough time yeah. you didn't, you didn't right. take exactly long enough, yes yeah exactly but yeah no it looks it looks like a decent game for sure all right uh, well we have. Well, Jay, I'm going to uh, audio version. People will not hear this and they'll sound like a smooth show. But Jay, if you want to take your hand at this second one, I'll give this one to you to, to try this you're out here. Give this guy to me. Yeah. You want to try this out? All right. Grid Autosport for the 360, the PS3 and the PC coming out. Grid Autosport. Never heard of it. And neither have you. Um, if you're still slumming in the last gen, then that's great because you can check out Grid Autosport. This is a follow-up, or follow-on, rather, to the 2013 Grid 
2 and a return to the series, uh, more technical racing routes. So the old series, obviously, more racing routes, more racing base, which is kind of funny with all these racers. Is uh, It seems like we went really, really arcade last gen, like a year or two ago, and now we're coming all the way back to being like more racing focused. Mm-hmm. The game features over 100 routes and 22 real world tracks, as well as almost 80 drivable vehicles. Pretty decent. There are definitely stronger contenders out there, of course, Forza being one of the main ones, as if anyone needed to know that. But if you're stuck in the last gen and you love racing, uh, then Grid Autosport might be for you. Yeah. But not I, I would <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, not for us. And I would venture to say that for most of the people that watch our show, probably not as well. It seems like Forza has this corner of on the market that really is uh, is kind of unbeatable just with all the partnerships they have with all these great car manufacturers real you know real mapping of all these awesome places it's kind of hard to beat them now you know what i mean that's kind of a tough that's kind of a tough end i don't know yeah, grid grid 2 was really popular in the, it was that over the top way and i remember right i think we, even we had like a positive review on our we did uh, yeah. on the site for that whoever reviewed that but we had a bunch of people that went out and played it they were they're playing it on the weekends it, it actually did fairly well I think it had a really low price point back then. There was some like deal yeah, you can get, yeah, some pre order deal or a sale, or yeah, yeah, it was some deal. But still, um, Grid was a good game, and it's uh, obviously they want to go back to that racing roots. Maybe they're trying to capture some of the Forza people before they can get their hands on the new Forza, uh, the new Forza Horizon. Maybe that's the deal. Like, oh, okay, well, Forza Horizon's not gonna be out for a while. Maybe you want to try our game out. So mm-hmm. this could be a win. Who knows? Yeah. It's hard for me to comment as a non-racing fan. That's, yes, that's as both you and I are more casual racers. We, we right. like the open world. We like the stuff that nobody else likes. Yeah. Right. We like the old oh. Horizon, and now the new Horizon is kind of a little bit of a departure. So. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there you go. All right. Well, uh, I guess on that, why don't we hop on over into gaming news? Now, we're going to change things up a little bit this week. Uh, we're going to take this over to the Tools Play News Desk and give this over to Tiffany Electrify Nolan. First story! Unmute yourself. Uh-oh. You're... Oh, <laughs> horrible, horrible. Let's try this again. So pro. Oh. <laughs> All right. So here are this week's news stories. Sony offering refunds in wake of Last of Us pre-order price drop, and this comes from Joystick. Usually price drops are seen as a good thing, but not always. When Sony lowered pre-orders for The Last of Us remastered on PS4 by $10, and it looked as though customers who had already pre-ordered the game for $59.99 wouldn't be able to get a refund for the price difference, there were more than a few people upset. Yet, despite the game's description page warning that customers, quote, may not cr- cancel a pre-order at any time and refunds are not available for pre-orders, end quote, it looks like good news is on the way. Sony VP of Publisher and Developer Relations, Adam Boys, told an unhappy customer on Twitter that a refund would be coming within the next five to seven days. Assuming Twitter user Tony K isn't a unique case and that others will also receive a $10 refund, Sony may have avoided a catastrophe of fungal apocalyptical <laughs> proportions. So uh, what do you guys think of this? Um, you, I, you know, I, I think that this is one of those growing pains of going from the, the physical media world to now these uh, the console makers selling you content directly. This is obviously something yeah. that Sony had not thought about beforehand. They they probably had that blanket statement on because the stuff they've sold in the past has not always been pre-orders and it's been, uh, you know, stuff from PSN or whatever. And and the old terms of service don't really apply to this modern world. Like when you order something on Amazon, sometimes I'll order something uh, not even gaming related. And then after I get it, I'll get an email and being like, you know, two days before you got this, uh, you know, shit went much lower priced and at this other side and it was $5 cheaper. And now, uh, now we're going to refund you your $5. So it's, it's just a different marketplace. Yeah. It's, it's a strange, I mean, I, I, I don't really blame them. I understand that people are, they kind of get up, uh, you know, get up in a tizzy whenever it comes to money and, and rightfully so. Um, but I, I don't actually think it's that big of a deal. $10 refund. Um, is, is, is a pretty good, is a pretty good way to do it. But I, I agree. I mean, it's, it's a totally different, um, I don't know. 
it's weird with Sony. I think overall people should be happy that these things are happening, I guess is, is the kind of uh, the way to, to look at it. Um, it it is yeah. good that despite their terms of service, they've right. changed it up and they said, okay, we, we realize that we're fucking over the people that are buying in the ecosystem where we take home the most money. Right. Like there's, right. there's no GameStop middleman. There's no target middleman. There's no Walmart middleman. Like, it's all profit for them at that point. So to fuck those guys over, if you screw them now, they're not going to come back. For exactly. The next pre-order, That's the so. worst part about it. Yeah. I mean, why, why would you ever want to come back to something? It's always like, if you screw me once, shame on me. That's how it is nowadays. Yep. There is no, like, there's no second chances with stuff like that. No, there's, so. there's just so many opportunities to go get yeah. stuff from different places all at the same price, because right. that's usually exactly. the thing. It's everybody's got the same price. Right. Um, it's path path of least resistance is always going to be the thing. You know, if everyone's got the same price, however, is the easiest way for you to get it is the way you're going to get it. No. So when you fuck people over like this, it's just kind of like, well, I could always get it elsewhere. So what's the point? So, so yeah. Sony making good. There you go. All right. all right. Tiff, next story. EA moves to Trump steam free weekends with origin game time. And this comes from Gamma Sutra. Electronics. Electronic Arts added a new feature to its Origin digital distribution client Friday, Game Time, a free game trial program that lets you download the full version of a featured game and play it as much as you like for 48 hours. Game Time seems like a clear attempt to one-up Steam's free weekend program, which regularly allows Steam users to download a featured game and play it as much as they like within a strict time frame. Origin's new system is a bit different. The 48-hour real-time window doesn't open until participants launch the game for the first time, affording users a bit more freedom in how they use the service. Titanfall is the inaugural game time offering, though it's not the only game EA is giving away through Origin. The company has been sporadically releasing its older games, Dead Space, Peggle, for free via the On the House program, presumably in an effort to entice people into signing up for Origin accounts. So what do you guys think about this one? This is an awesome, awesome move. Because the thing is, really, Origin has a bad name. Like, the, the minute Origin came out, people hated it. And everyone saw it for what it is, which is obviously EA trying to corner the market on Steam. They want to get in on that before Steam gets too big, which it already is. Um, so, I mean, really, Origin has a lot going against it. It has really shitty DRM. Everything is tied into EA's ecosystem, which means you can't buy EA games on Steam, almost never. Uh, so they, they really make it so I have to have basically two Steams in order to play all the PC games I want. So really, it's a have always looked at it as a bad thing. Origin, to me, has always been a bad thing. This gives you a reason to maybe even be a part of Origin. Finally, it gives you a reason to be a part of that ecosystem that you probably never really wanted to be a part Uh, be a part of. So for me, it's a good move by EA. Uh, However, I don't know that I ever want to be a part of that ecosystem, even though they're giving me this possibility. So for for me, some things you don't have a choice. Right. There's some things you have no choice. Yes. And, and that part of it, you know, it's, it, it, you're stuck no matter what. It's kind of like using Ubisoft's bullshit. Like, and you have to log in there, create your account there. You play or whatever their shit's called. Right. You play. Um, uh, but for this, I, I it, it's at least nice to see them taking a step in the right direction. EA is always, even before uh, Origin, EA had this bad rep. Like, if you own a game from EA from four or five years ago, every year EA turns off the servers for games right. that really don't even need any sort of server. Like, you may be playing a sports game that all the connectivity is is client to client, but, you know, they, they require all these server connections and... <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, and the reason for that is because they just shut those off to get you to buy the next game and the next game and the next game and the next game. Uh, so it, at least it seems like now EA is listening to people and they're trying to take some of these comments into uh, into account. And uh, this, this definitely seems like shots fired over the bow of uh, uh, of steam and, yeah. and possibly maybe we'll see some new things come out of EA at this point. As long as they're on a roll here, maybe they're going to come out with something else like. I, I don't know. You can't beat the Steam sale. I don't know where else. Yeah, you that's can, what I was going to yeah, say. Yeah. That's their, that the biggest thing that they're fighting against is the Steam sale, which, by the way, if you guys didn't know, Steam sale is going on right now. So go buy a bunch of games that you will never play. Uh, but having said that, that's really that's a hard market to fight against. And this is a great way. This way, they don't copy Steam sale. They're not trying to be, you know, this is a, a different offering that Steam currently doesn't do that 
sort of puts them above Steam. This is one thing that they can do that entices you to come to their platform and play. So in terms of the marketing strategy, in terms of getting new people to come to Origin, this is a great thing. Having said that, like I said before, I don't know if it would even be enough for me to go to Origin. I have, like Derek said, I have games like SimCity. I have to, I have, to have Origin to play it. Lucky for me, SimCity was such a debacle and horrible <laughs> explosion of shittiness uh, that my time on Origin was very limited because I basically played it for a week or... I'm sorry, attempted to play it for a week, and when it failed over and over, I never used it again. So there are games on there that you're forced to play, but at least if I want to try something out and I get this 48-hour period, I'll, I'll definitely go there first because it's really no harm on me. I mean, I download it, I try it out. The funny part is if I like it, and it's on Steam. I'll probably just go, go there Steam and buy. And buy. <laughs> that's the that's the part where I don't know if they'll actually get me to pay the money to stay on or- Origin. If it's on Steam, I'm gonna get it on Steam because that's where all my games are. So we'll see though. This is this is good. This is competition. This is what we want. We don't yeah. want just Steam. I'm, I know people like to think that because it's EA, but you want the you want you plays. You want these things. You want these things to all kind of be out there to give give some competition to steam and make sure valve keeps doing a, a great job so yeah now origin yeah. does have the potential now because they are because you do log into origin servers on all the consoles ea right. would have a, a a i don't know what it would cost them to do it but to eat the cost of paying both consoles um whatever fees they pay out imagine if you could buy something the same game that you would buy on steam and if you could buy it on origin and it could play on the PC, or you got a, a code for the Xbox and a code for the PlayStation, that would be phenomenal. I don't know what uh, what they right. would have to eat for cost for that, um, for licensing for both consoles or whatever. But yeah. to, just to bring that money into them and not to someone else on all the PC sales, I... I don't, I, there, there's probably someone that's got a big giant fucking abacus that's figuring all this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's they, good stuff. Overall, though, it's good. Like, that's, uh, that's, I think the best thing to, to take away from this is like competition is good. You want to see stuff like this and hopefully they keep doing stuff like this. Hopefully it lights a fire under valve's ass and they, you know, knowing steam and knowing valve two weeks from now, they'll be like, Oh, we have the 72 hour deal. That's and yeah, that will just, be that. just one up and by 24 up, hours. And yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. it's good stuff. Most definitely. All right, Tiff next story. I would like to preface this story by saying there is a lot of numbers in this one, so you'll have to bear with me. Like, a lot of numbers. Destiny, a a game very near and dear dear to our hearts. Uh, Destiny's Alpha saw over 6 million games played, and this comes via Polygon. The Alpha test for Bungie's Destiny that launched on PlayStation 4 earlier this month brought on more than 6 million player games with, quote, too many guardians to count. Served with in-game dance parties, according to a post on the Bungie blog. The post, written written by community manager David Daig, is that right? That's Deej, yep. Deej. Shares a handful of statistics from the almost week-long testing phase. So here's where all the numbers come in. In addition to the exactly 6,461,871 games played, players also engaged in 149,522,313 primary weapon kills, 21,782,610 secondary weapon kills, and 4,002,737 heavy weapon kills. Super abilities were also assessed for final kills, 21,687,298 times. But wait, there's more. Players also took down 60,491,944 fallen dregs, the lowest class of four armored humanoid creatures that roam the Earth and the Moon and Destiny's most common encounter. Quote, putting our alpha out there lit a new kind of fire here at Bungie, Daig wrote. It feels like we've been reborn. Putting alpha code out in the wild is always a risk. That build is is ancient by our standards, riddled with content and bugs we'd never allow through to ship. Quote, in many cases, the really rough and jagged edges had been hammered smooth long ago, making it all the more difficult to see them discovered, but in just as many others, there's still work to do. And the only way to get it done is to let you touch down in our world to tear the place wide open. (laughs) 
Players also gathered 2,819,211 orbs of light, captured 6,850,773 control points in the Crucible, which is Destiny's multiplayer mode, and were awarded 1,195 deathless medals. Approximately 4,356 splatters were made with the land-based Sparrow vehicle. During the Alpha phase, players joined in 667,966 publicly held events as well. Destiny's Alpha phase launched for PS4 on Thursday, June 12, and was extended past its initial weekend-long run for, quote, dangerous experiments. The beta will hit PS3 and PS4 on July 17th. Wow, that is a lot of numbers. So what do you guys think about this? Did you guys play the beta or the, uh, the oh. alpha? I, I, mean, I played the fuck out of this. I, I max leveled and I was so sad when it gave me like my little, you've reached the max level. Good job. Um, yeah. And then I was even sadder when I was uh, waiting uh, for Fios here the next day at home. And I fired up in the morning and it was like, the alpha has ended. Thank you for your help. And I was like, no, I got a whole day here at the house. I just want to play the fuck out of this. But... <clears throat> It was awesome. They, those are some great numbers, considering yeah, this alpha was only on PS4, one platform. It is on one, well, next gen, which is the current gen platform, not the install base of the 360 or the PS3, not a PC install base. So this is just people that have already moved on to the, uh, the current generation of consoles and only the people with the PS4. And then of those people... The people that hopped on this uh, this alpha that was were either given invites or were eventually brought in, but that is what was it? Six million games. Uh, let's see, where was it? it was oh like, my god, there were so many numbers in there. Six hundred and sixty-seven thousand publicly held events. Those are the world events that occurred. So uh, I participated in one of these. I don't know how many. Jay, do you do you run into any of these world events? Yeah, they're and they're amazing. Like, I, yes. obviously, holy shit is what I'm saying right now. We all know this. But, I mean, it really was, for, for me, for an alpha, to see an alpha come out like that. And like, we said it a million times. I said it even when we were at E3 and I wrote up my whole uh, big thing about it. It didn't even feel like an alpha. And when, he, when they talk about how bug-ridden it was, like, for them, when they describe it like, oh, and this was like, this was like throwaway shit that we had that we've mm-hmm. since fixed months ago. Uh, I was like, what? Was the I would have taken like, the code. I would have taken what they gave us as the game. Like, I'm good to go now. I'm Let good me to pay go you now. Right now. Take my money. Yeah. Uh, I, I said this to a friend of mine too. Uh, is asking me like, you know, is it, is it a good game? Do you like it? I said, I would pay. And then the people, this is where I, I look like an idiot. I, I fully understand that. But I would give them the 60 bucks now to just play the alpha until just, keep just rolling the, me jilts. Just until roll around. Out. Yeah. Like screw around and just do the, do like the PVP, like be in the crucible, get good at the game. I would pay the money now. Well, I already have because I'm pre-ordering anyway, but I would do it just to be able to have access to the alpha, the shitty buggy, crappy alpha that they released. That was more, more polished than that. any game that I've played in the last five six yeah. years so i would definitely buy into these things earlier on than uh if they allowed you to i would buy it in plenty of games this way yeah yeah i don't know i mean it's it's really it's really it's really pretty cool i mean o- overall to see again of course we're a little biased uh you know destiny behind me and obviously the holy shit right there yeah. but i truly love the game this is what's great about doing what we do is it's not a promotion it's not anything like that it's like i finally get a game that i love and there's nothing i love more than talking about a game i love I love so. this game from two ways i love it from the fps side i love it from the mmo yeah. side it is right it's, it's awesome both. yeah so now, um yeah now, that's of, great. The, of the giant amount of numbers that tiff read there the one that really stood out to me though in the whole thing which goes to show probably how balanced this game is is out of all of those fucking games that were played there were only 1,195 deathless medals, which is when you go without getting killed. So that, that's, oh, wow. Yeah. So that, that's like, you have like 20, 149 million kills and 29, 21 million secondary weapon kills and, you know, hundreds of thousands of games, only 1,195 deathless medals. So that's pretty impressive for the, the people that pulled those off. That's a small number, which means the game is probably pretty well balanced if, there's some asshole just can't hang back with the snipe and you know, they, the things that people complain about every other shooter. 
Right, right, yeah. Um, so that that's uh, that, that was pretty interesting, but no, oh, yeah, overall really impressive stuff. And to be honest, I'm I'm not surprised. I mean, I I feel like the game, like I said, functionally was there. So you know, when you have g- gameplay, is always we say this all the time. Gameplay is the most important thing. Graphics in Destiny are, are beautiful for my standards. They didn't even need to be as beautiful as they are. The gameplay is solid enough for me. And there's some things I don't like, but I, I would be nitpicking at that point. But however, for how solid it is at this stage. That just means it could get so much better in the future. So I'm I'm overall just really impressed with it, with what they've done so far. So yep. yeah, me too. All right, well Tiff, you want to move on to uh, this week's what the fuck story? You betcha. So here we have this week's what the fuck story. Riot Games offers new hires cash to quit. This comes from Joystick. League of Legends developer Riot Games announced a new company initiative called Q Dodge which allows new North America hires to receive 10% of their annual salary if they leave the company within 60 days. Basically, we're offering new hires cash to quit, the company stated. Riot notes that this doesn't mean they want to actively push employees out or, quote, dare them to leave, but that instead the move is aimed at helping new hires who feel the company isn't the right fit for them find a well-lit safe exit path. Judging by the picture Riot chose to headline their announcement, it is also an exit path filled with memes and Shiba Inu dogs. Additionally, Riot hopes to strengthen company culture. Quote, we operate on a foundation of shared mission, values, passion, trust, and mutual respect. End quote. Riot stated in the news post revealing Q Dodge. If someone gags on the unique flavor of our culture, they'd be doing themselves and the company a disservice to hang on just for the paycheck. Wow. So what do you guys think about this story? Like they're paying people to quit. Uh, uh, It's it's so crazy on one side, but on the other side, it it makes sense. Like sometimes uh, as someone that's hired a lot of people and we've made tremendous mistakes with uh, like, there's been people that have fooled me in the interview process. Yep. Oh, yeah. Let's hire this guy and we bring him in and they become the the biggest, saddest sack of shit. and, And either you end up. You, you you have to milk them through the process. You have to give them, you know, put them on their performance plan and you have to give them, you know, this and this and this. And before you can get rid of them, this is, this seems like the way where everybody can be happy. You know, you come to a company and you, you mistake what you think you're going to be doing there. You mistake, you, maybe you're not a good fit. Maybe you don't jive with your team. This is like, like a mini parachute that you can take. It's not, not a parachute. It's more like, uh, a wingsuit that you can yeah. fly to somewhere else. It's it's not a full, it's not a golden parachute, most definitely. And it's not a little parachute. It's like a wingsuit. You just fly over to some other company and you take your little money on the way out. It's like, hey, here's some money just to tide you over while you find a new job. It's it's fucked up, but it's genius at the same time. Yeah. I mean, it, it's funny. When I when this story broke, uh, I read it to like a bunch of my colleagues and stuff. This isn't this isn't new. Like this is not like some some awesome like really heartfelt thing that they're doing. I mean, I I, I would almost say this isn't a what the fuck story because this actually happens a lot in corporate America because it's way easier to pay. It's better for the company and easier to pay bad people to leave than it is to keep bad people within your culture for one and paying them for no reason because they suck clearly um, for the other reason. So like for me. This is not like, oh, wow, they're being super nice and they're, you know, giving people money to leave because no, this is good for them as a company. This is good for the culture. It's good for their bottom line. It gets rid of bad apples right away. Most companies usually have a 90 day probation period anyway, where they can hire you and fire you at will. Um, So, I mean, it's cool. I mean, it's certainly a company does not have to pay you to leave. Uh, They, like I said, they reserve the right generally within 90 days to fire you anyway. So it's nice. But this is almost just a good way. It's almost like hush money. Just like, just it didn't work yeah. out. Here's a little severance package. Go find another place to work. Yeah, it's like when you got your so, guma on the side. You're like, hey, it's exactly here, take, take this money and just get yourself a nice apartment. Right. And go hang out there and just whatever you do, don't come see my wife. Okay. Exactly. Just, that's Stay for you. Away. 
You stay there. This is this is our place, and I'll I'll go see you there. But you take this money and you make yourself come. You get yourself some nice, you know. You get yourself get, a get little yourself cocaine. Make it real nice and pretty. You know get what I yourself mean? some cocaine. Have some nose candy. Have a good time. Make yourself. Why don't you freak. go out dancing for a little bit? Take yeah. take your friends. Go out <laughs> dancing for a night or two. You call me back a little bit later. We'll go. We'll hang out. It'll be fantastic. Yeah. I got some shit at home to do with. But once I'm done with that, I'm gonna come over to the apartment. I'm gonna make you feel special. There you, you know. go. That that's the that's the equivalent of this, <laughs> and and it, all I can see in the window is Tiff making this. Her face is like <laughs> it's priceless. She's like, what the fuck? Ah, uh, oh my god! <laughs> and, and now we don't have a feed into our key <laughs> exit line. All right, this story what? has me saying, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> And on that, why don't we hop oh. on over into the mailbag and voicemails. Altius asks, this is certainly the year of the shooters, both first and third person on the new consoles. Uh, with so many coming, which are you looking most forward to? So, well, I think we obviously have covered Destiny. Jay's fucking skeeting over his shoulder at it. He's like <laughs> on this background there, which doesn't even actually exist. It's green screened. But if it did, his green screen's now going to have little marks on it. That's right. Uh, Halo 2, part of the uh, Master Chief collection. Super pumped for that. Uh, yeah, I would say, I, for me, I, I hate saying this because deep in chat always makes fun of me because I said I'd never play a Halo game ever again. Um, but yeah, Halo 2. It's, it's, but I, I still say that I'm not technically playing a Halo game again. I'm playing the same game that I already played. Therefore, it's okay. Well, but no. you, we've played thousands and thousands it's of true. multiplayer games of that. It's true. It's true. But yeah, those, I mean, like outside of those, how about this? Because it's a great question, but it's one I feel like we've answered just because of E3. Is there any game outside of the ones we've kind of said that you're, that you're really psyched about? Um, Sunset Overdrive. Oh, yeah? Third person. I'm looking forward to checking that out. That, that looks fun and fast and... Uh, it's definitely it's more like Jet Set Radio Future meets uh, Gears of War. Yeah, it, it's great. definitely a different type of game. Way faster than Gears. Way different than Jet Set that had no weapons. So um, it, it, it's it, that's definitely on the list. So I guess for me, it's Destiny. It's Halo Five. It's the Halo Master Chief Collection. It's Sunset Overdrive. It's uh, I'm there's so many other like uh, it's Call of Duty. Yeah, uh, Kevin Spacey. Like, I I don't even know. Like, so what was this question with so many coming? What you looking most forward to? Well, I can't the, even. That's the thing is, it's a very it's a very tough question. I mean, that's the problem, right? And it's a good problem to have as a gamer. We've talked about this even like last year when when all these games come out at once. It really makes it kind of shitty on a game. I mean, it's like because I know that I'll never be able to take one game, put it aside, and then play it. Like even right now, I'm playing. I'm currently playing Wild Starts. What I want to play, but I do want time for for to play. You know, like even the beta, even to play a little bit of Battlefield. But I, it's hard, even with that. That's one beta and one other game, and it's hard to play. So, it's a it's almost a bummer. There's that, too that's, many good games. That's part of what uh what makes this nice that certain games have been delayed. Like the Division was delayed till right. 2015. Yeah. Uh, Battlefield doesn't have a date yet. It, these things are are good for us because right now, like of the the five or six I just said, I didn't. I really, honestly, don't know which I'm gonna gonna no. pick. I, we're probably gonna, just because we get the benefit of buying them once and two of us playing them. Every game is half price in our house, so I yeah, that's all. Awesome. We can definitely afford to pick them all up, and it's it's not a an overwhelming cost. But I, I don't know. There, I just I can't wait to play them all. Like yeah. even Call of Duty, which. Sometimes it, it, it treats me right. Sometimes it lets me down. Sometimes the single, the campaign's awesome. Sometimes the multiplayer sucks. Sometimes the multiplayer is awesome. Sometimes this campaign sucks. This one was, of all the E3 presentations we've seen of Call of Duty over the years and years and years, this one really seemed like they got it. And, yeah. and they wrote a script for like basically what was a movie that you're playing, and they, they wrote it for Kevin Spacey before they even had Kevin Spacey. And they're like, hey, by the way, we wrote this role for you. Can you do our video game? And ah, I can't wait to play that. It, that just was so badass. 
Yeah, I mean, the games that I didn't think – that's when you know it's bad. Like the games I didn't think that I was going to want to play, I want to play. So yeah, I had no uh, interest. It, it'll be interesting. Yeah, definitely. Like again, Halo, big one. Never wanted to play it again. Going to play it. Mm-hmm. Um, which uh, ironically kind of got me psyched for Halo 5 even though we don't know much about it. Um, mm-hmm. But then Destiny, I always obviously wanted to play. But then Call of Duty, I didn't really want to play. And now it looks actually halfway decent. So it's going to be an interesting year this year for sure. It's going to be a crazy, crazy holiday season. That's – that's without question. So, Altius, I guess your takeaway here is we, we're going to play them all. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> that's any of the shooters we will be playing. Yep. That is, that's the moral of the story. All right. Well, thanks for the question, Altius. That was one of your more difficult ones and more asshole-ish, if I must say, because it kind of puts us on the spot and we all look dumb. But uh, if any of your feedback, give us a call, 773-527-2961. Email us at podcast at toolplay.com. You can also comment to this episode's thread on the Tool to Play homepage. <clears throat> Here it goes. And sponsors. Remember, by supporting our sponsors. This is, <laughs> oh, my God. I fucked you that tried. Up. I'm proud of you. Remember, by supporting our sponsors, you can help support Still Got Game. GoDaddy, starting at less than $5 a month. Web hosting from GoDaddy.com includes 99% uptime, 24 by 7 support, and free access to the GoDaddy hosting connection. The place to quickly install over 50, 50 applications like WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, EROS, Commerce, and more. Go to toolplay.com slash GoDaddy for great deals on new.com registrations and renewals starting at just $1.99. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. And you know what? If you'd like sponsor us, you have something to sell. You know, you tell us what you want to sell. We'll tell you what you're going to pay us. We'll sell it. You pay us. Boom. Done. Twitter us up. You can find everything tool to play related to twitter.com slash tool to play. Everything podcast related at twitter.com slash still underscore got underscore game. I, king of the fucking internet, got of everything that's fucking holy. I'm at twitter.com slash Derek Nolan. And of course, you can find me at twitter.com slash dude I. You can also find Tiff at twitter.com slash electrify with a K. Uh, also, Facebook the fuck out of us. Facebook.com slash too old to play. Facebook.com slash Derek Nolan. Facebook.com slash dude I rock. Facebook.com slash Tiff Nolan. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash tool to play. And what you'll find here is every bit of video content that tool to play puts out. That is this show on a regular fucking schedule, week after week, like like uh, like your shits in the morning. Like your your afternoon blowjob, like your your weekend coke bender, like these things are all fucking things that happen every week. Like, you, you know, you can count these things down, and you they're they're on a timer, and so is everything on the Tool to Play uh, YouTube channel from Still Got Game. Now, there's other things that are a little more random. There's episodes of Thick and Thin with LB and Duty. You never know when you're gonna get that. It's been like six months. Yeah. yeah. Every time there's a new game out. You might have a chance to get hits, motherfucking quick hits, motherfucking quick hits. We got to like Ed hit on now to get him. Like, I feel like he's, he's been on hiatus. He yeah. He's going to start doing this again. Hit's got to pick up a game and fucking play it. Fucking caress that case. I'm like, saying it doesn't matter. Like, you just like, it's like, oh, yeah, fucking caress that shit. Caress, caress. Oh, I'm opening it. Ah. <gasps> Like that's what what we're missing is is hit actually do oh and the crinkles of the shrink wrap is is key, and that's when hit said his very best when he's practically blowing a load in his pants over a brand new game and that's why people love his show like he really he does it up and he really sells it he sells it like whatever game he's playing that night is fucking better than. You know, your best night you've ever had in your life. He's like, oh, you, yeah, yeah, you had like 28 strippers and you did like a pile of blow the size of, you know, the coffee table, whatever. I got this new game. Crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. And you're like, oh my God, that is way better. But it's really not. But yeah, hit, you should really <laughs> just sell games, I think, for a living. Like it is yeah. just it put you on to sell a game. I'd buy it. Yeah, he, he's he's quite the salesman. That, he, he, is. Actually, he should get those things fucking, yeah, some ads on those streams because really, yeah. They, they they amount to like a three hour jerk off advertisement. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, we also have the Tool to Play app. It's uh, on the iTunes App Store. It's also on all of the fake app stores that you Android pieces of shit use, like 
like I know you guys don't have one central place. Like some people go to Amazon, some people go to Google Play or whatever. That, all your fucking fake virus ridden shit that has no, you know, <laughs> no barrier to entry, no protections, no walled fence to save you from the bullshit. But you know what? The tool play apps on all of those things and uh, you go there, you get it. And that app is full of awesome shit. It's got all of the content from the Tool to Play homepage. It also has all the video content. So maybe you were too lazy to go to youtube.com slash tool to play. It, it's short URL, by the way. They're like You can just type that by mistake. Like monkeys yep. type that. But let's say you didn't. Let's say you, your fingers got cut off in a masturbation accident. Well, now you, you can download the app. And, well, that is fucked up. Yeah, that was really fucked up. <laughs> well, it would be a horrible masturbation accident. Yeah, no, but, definitely. Uh, so now you download the app and all this stuff is pushed to you right on the app on your smartphone. So definitely the place to go for all the tool to play content and it's absolutely fucking free. And if you have any comments or suggestions, let us know. And, uh, we will definitely, uh, implement those because it is a work in progress and we're trying to make it better for everybody. Uh, also please rate and review this podcast in iTunes. You know, Jay, how many stars do we need in iTunes? Uh, 755 stars is generally what we go for. That's the goal. That is the goal. That is yeah. the goal. Now, yeah. what is iTunes temporarily but currently ta- uh, cap us at? Temporarily, we're capped at five. We're obviously on a daily basis trying to make sure they lift that cap yeah. because we're, most people don't want to vote for five with us. They want to go for those high numbers. They're just not allowed to yet. No, so yeah, they, eventually, they treat we'll us like everybody else. Yeah, it's disgusting. I know. Like, and Jay, if you were to give our, our show a sample review on iTunes, it may be even something that our listeners, if they're so lazy or dumb, that they just wanted to copy and, and type in verbatim. What should they type? Well, usually I like to start out with a little story. So something like this. When I was a young child, I was without a father, without a mother. I spent my entire life building a life that I thought had meaning. I struggled from ages zero, zero to 14. But finally, when I became of age, when I finally became a man, I found still got game. It was from that point forward that I became king of the land. All women bowed at my feet. I made millions and millions of dollars, and I had the epic life that I knew I deserved. All thanks to Derek and Joel and Still God Game. That would be a gen. That's a general review. That's normally what we get. That's just a sampling of the things that we usually get. So something along that lines is usually. That's on the tame end. That's on the tame end. That's a normal, everyday sort of thing that we get. Uh, with it, you, you know, it's either fan mail or just, you know, usually handwritten letters uh, sealed in wax, usually given to us that way. <laughs> <laughs> Flown in by carrier pigeon. That's uh, the, the normal hand- way we yeah. get mail. Yeah, the hand of the king is boom. It's, right exactly. On. <laughs> it's stamped on there. It's just ignore. It's an everyday thing. It's really, yes. I don't know. But that, that, yeah, that is, I, I asked Jay to make something up, but he actually read that right off the yeah, review. Yeah, it's a verbatim thing. I just read it. It's just one of the things he I took, got. He took the easy way out, like always, but. It's on some, it it's is on what some it is. parchment. <laughs> on my on my desk right now. Some hemp parchment. All right. Well, that, yeah, that, that's the kind of stuff we need. So please go there and do that. Uh, also, we do need subscribers on Twitch. If you go to twitch.tv slash tool to play and subscribe to us there, every time we go live, whether it's this show, whether it's hit going live with some game uh, or hits motherfucking with the motherfucking shits or whatever it is, whatever tool to play content is going live, you will be notified right on your phone. My phone's like, Tool to play just went live and I look and then I pop it up and it's like hit fucking like, oh my god, I'm opening this shit up. It's so awesome. I can't wait to play this game in two hours. But whatever it is, you will be notified of that shit. So please go to twitch.tv uh, slash tool to play and subscribe. Last but not least, please join us each and every Monday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific, twitch.tv slash tool to play. We are live, we have a chat room, and this is where the good shit goes down. Um, the chat room has been going nuts. We're all trying to appease them with comments. Eventually we will have a secondary audio channel, which will be providing the, the feedback from the chat channel to us without you hearing it. And, uh, we'll be able to address that in real time, but we just need to hire yet another free person to do that. Right. Uh, but that's coming soon. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. We, we pay the most of all the people that pay nothing. Yes. Yes. (laughs) All right. Well, on that, why don't we wrap this episode up? I am Derek D. Smooth Nolan. And I am Joel Dude I Rock Albert. Episode 37 in a row.